Tom O'Neill, The Envelope, with Michael Mustow of The Village Voice. I got a list here of the potential candidates for Best Actress at the Oscars. Tell me who the five are going to be, Michael. Uh, Meryl Streep is obviously a lock for her pinched face nun in doubt. Um, Anne Hathaway, obviously, is another lock for Rachel getting married, for the sociopath who kind of disrupts the wedding. I thought she was the sympathetic character. I was rooting for her over the <laughs> normal people. <laughs> I'm actually saying Angelina Jolie is getting in for Changeling. I know she hasn't been nominated since her one time when she won for Girl Interrupted. What, what was she in in that movie, Tom? A mental asylum. What oh, is she I in in Changeling? Exactly. I think there's a real Once again, she's in the mental mm -hmm. asylum. That gets you nominated. <laughs> <laughs> and I think people are ready to forgive the fact that she stole Brad Pitt and she's adopting every baby that exists. Uh, I'm actually rooting for Sally Hawkins, and I think she's going to get a nomination for Happy Go Lucky. Mike Lee's women get nominated. Remember That's Brenda right. Blethyn, Imelda Staunton. And Sally Hawkins has won three Critics Awards in a row, Boston, L.A., New York, got a Golden Globe nomination. She's got a lot of momentum. And she was kind of shut out early on, which you and I were yes. both putting her in our top five while a lot, yes. of, a lot of these other pundits were not. It was as if she was falling out of that fifth position in favor of Kristen Scott Thomas, for example. I think right. she's now falling off. Do you agree? I do. It's a very understated performance, and a lot of people haven't seen it. It didn't really take off in, in certain cities, I don't think. And I don't think a lot of people are going to sit through the, the screener. <laughs> it, it's a rewarding film, but it's not easy. The payoff at the end is a little cheesy. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with yeah. that. Now the Kate Winslet question right here, which is, yes. it, well, let's talk about this. This Everyone's saying, oh, of course they're going to nominate her for Revolutionary Road in the lead position and the reader in supporting because that's the way her campaigns are. But as you and I know, that the Oscar voters can put these people wherever they want right. and that they get a reminder list that's, that that simply tells them of who's in the running, and that reminder list is alphabetical, and it's going to say Kate Winslet, comma, the reader, Kate yeah. Winslet, comma, Revolutionary Road, and that the reader's going to be on top, and Revolutionary Road seems to be tanking a bit now in terms of its early expectations. Well, we don't know about the box office yet, but uh, it's love or hate, and New York Magazine said it was a masterpiece, and her performance is transcendent. Uh, she's up for a Golden Globe for it. So it is possible she'll get both nominations, lead actress for Revolutionary Road, supporting for the reader. I, however, think people are going to turn against Revolutionary Road because it's really not that good. And, <laughs> you know, and I understand that she wants to push that for lead because her husband directed it and they worked very hard on it. But, but I, it was it, shut uh, out of the Critics' Choice Awards. And I, I know a lot of people uh, claim there's, it's very controversial whether or not that's an Oscar indicator, but uh, embracing that theory for a while. It, for a moment here, just to make your point, it, it didn't show up in the top categories, which was really surprising. Yeah. Rev, Rev Road, I'm talking about. So I think people are going to say, give her the nod for the reader, which is definitely a leading role. She's, there's no question that that is not a supporting role. So you think there's a strong possibility she gets in there for the reader? I do too, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I think people feel she came out with two worthy films on some level, and she's going to deserve at least one nomination. Now, all of these other gals, the Melissa Leos, the Michelle Williams, do they have a prayer? I'm afraid not. These are very small <laughs> films that require a lot of care in the handling, and they're going to fall through the cracks. I mean, they can't nominate everyone. Sally Hawkins is getting the quirky, offbeat nomination, I would say. So she's getting the Melissa Leo spot and the Michelle Williams spot. And who wins? I'm going right now with Meryl. They could go with Anne Hathaway to keep up the tradition of hot young women winning. Uh, but this could be another nod for Meryl. She's been nominated, what, 8,000 times? She's only won twice. One and a half, if you count the supporting one for Kramer. <laughs> and I okay, do. one and a half. Does? I didn't know that they just give you <laughs> half, half well, of a trophy. The, the poor deer just holds the head. Right, the poor deer holds the record for the most Oscar nominations, but but Hepburn yeah. beats her by four to one and a half in terms of wins. Yeah, so it's time to let Merrill even the score with Hepburn. But it's been more than twenty five years since she's won. I don't think the Oscar voters realize. Don't you think they think that she's got a million of these things? In their mind, they think, oh, she's won every year. Right, right, they've right, seen right. her win Golden Globes. She always gives the greatest speech. So you think of her as a winner, but it's time to actually make her a winner again. I agree with that. But I think that there's also a strong sentimental push behind poor Kate Winslet, who has lost five times. If the poor dear loses one more time, she ties Thelma Ritter and Deborah Carr <laughs> as the biggest female loser in Oscar history. If she actually gets nominated in lead and supporting as she wants, then that's two more nominations, and if she loses both, then she sets a whole new record. The poor thing. She's only 33 years. What do they have against this girl? 33 well, first years of all, Thelma Ritter was only nominated in supporting, so right, right, that only right. counts as two and a half times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I think Kate is the new Deborah Carr, let's face it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good way to look I don't it. think they have anything against her. Sometimes you just have bad luck where your performance is up against someone else who had a tracheotomy or you know, right, right. is suddenly popular for some reason. Um, 
I think she could actually get two nominations and lose both like Sigourney Weaver did. Remember that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we all remember when Barry Fitzgerald was up for both for the same performance <laughs> going my way. I'm still irked about that. Of oh, I'm pissed. I remember when that happened. <laughs> But I don't think there's any animosity at all against Kate Winslet. I think people love her, and you know the no continual nominations are a reflection of that. But uh, she's 33. If she doesn't get it this year, she's definitely going to get it at some point. Mm -hmm. but, but that's what they told Deborah Carr. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, sometimes there is that kind of Susan Sarandon thing that happened the year of Dead Man Walking. It's like, okay, well, let's finally give it to her. Right. Uh, and I think Kate has that buzz and momentum this year, but she's confusing the, the, the issue with these two roles. I wouldn't want to be in her position. I mean, these are the problems of Hollywood stars. You have two big movies coming out, and you want to get uh, you know, recognition for both. It, God, it's rough out there. But if she wins either one, she should say, this is on behalf of Deborah Carr, Thelma Ritter, Julianne Moore, <laughs> you know, Glenn Close, Ooh. all the women who never got it. 